Brianna and now Fell say easier. <laughs> you see all these green tabs? Those are marked scriptures, and that's not the main passage. So we might be here a while. That's what my wife asked me. How long are we going to be there when she saw all of that? Hey, we're going to start camp meeting out now. Doesn't camp go longer? And the question I have is, Brianna, you preached last week. Today you were a lead singer. Does that mean I have to do that next week? Because I'm out. I'm out. I'm, I'm going to go out of town, do something. No, you do not want that. I'll go out of town today. Quickly. Let's pray. Holy Spirit, we thank you so much for your presence in our lives. Thank you seems so trite and ineffectual, but that's what we have. We praise you and we thank you that you are our power, you are our provider, you are our comforter. Forgive us for ignoring you oftentimes in our lives. But today, we, we want your presence manifested here today, however you choose to. And Lord, just hide me behind your cross. Let whatever words come out of my mouth be from you, not from me. And from your word, in Jesus' mighty name, amen. We have been in Galatians a while, and we're not done after today, so cheer up. We'll be in Galatians a little longer to the finish. Paul's been having to address different issues within the Galatian group of people. It's a, a mixture of people. If you do a study on the Galatian area, it's not one little town. It's several little towns. There's different ethnicities that have been involved. So you have, with different ethnicities, you have different ideas, different concepts, different beliefs. Everything's different. So there became some struggles. And as we've talked about several times, Abram mentioned this a few weeks ago, it's like we've preached the same sermon over and over. Law, we've got to be follow the law. And the law is important. But there is diversity, uh, the struggle with the law versus faith. Lifestyles of sin had to have been very prevalent for Paul to have addressed Galatia as he did. Um, so he'd been seeking, he'd been speaking to them about faith, sanctification. And sanctification only comes through the Holy Spirit, not through the law. In Luke chapter 11, if I don't get lost in all my bookmarks, that will be the miracle today. Verse 13, so if you sinful people know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? And I'm going to get to this tree in a little bit. I'm glad it's up there. Thank you, Aaron. It's a tree like you've never seen before until today. So there is our part in this, and it's, it's repentance. In Acts 2, verse 38, Peter replied, Each of you must repent of your sins and turn to God and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. For the forgiveness of your sins, then you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. In Matthew 13, there's the story of the parable of the sower of the seeds. It's a common one we've heard, most of us, I've heard my whole life because I've been in church my whole life. I heard it as a little bitty guy in Bible schools and Sunday schools and preaching time. And those of you who are garden-oriented people, or farmers. I have farming family. So I get the concept of you casting seed. You don't get a crop if you don't put seed out. 
But then there's the different kinds of the ground the seed lands on, which in the parable, and I'm not going to take the time to read it because we have much to cover, uh, there's all the different grounds that the seed falls on. And ultimately, the seed is only produce, only produces when it hits fertile soil, good soil. Not You can throw seed all day long on this floor. You'll get weeds to grow, as we have out here by our sidewalk. They keep growing. Sorry about that. Um, in John chapter 15, 1 through 5, is the... Uh, where Jesus talks about, and John talks about, the vine and the branch. Everyone who believes Jesus is the Christ has become the child. Okay, I picked the wrong, that's the wrong spot. I apologize. I got the wrong spot. I'm in 1 John. See, I told you I'd get lost in these things. <laughs> Thought it would be quick, but it's not. Now, yeah, John, I'm the true grapevine, and my father is the gardener. He cuts off every branch of mine that does not produce fruit, and he prunes the branches that do bear fruit, so that they will produce even more fruit. You've already been pruned and purified by the message I have given you. And then down in verse 11, he said, I've told you these things so that you will be filled with my joy. Yes, your joy will overflow. And then again in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, if you want to go there, old things pass away, new things sprout and burst forth as fruit grows and as life grows. Matthew 7, 20, what does he say? What does Matthew say to us? How will they know us? They will know us by our love. Love, as you'll find out in a few moments, is the very first fruit of the Spirit. Love is the basis for all of it, for everything in our existence. Produces, fruit is produced by yielding to the Holy Spirit who dwells in us. It's an act of the will. It's a choice. That's kind of been my favorite thought process in the last few years. Life is choice. You can choose to be happy. You can choose to be sad. You can choose to be angry. You can choose to be joyful. It's a choice. No matter what your circumstances, it's still, you have a choice how you react to things. Constant fruit, there's a constant fight against sin, as we discover in the Scripture. And fruit of the Spirit is to be visibly lived out in the context of the community of the church. That's really what the fruit of the Spirit's for, is for us the believers, the church. And as you see on the screen, this tree. Has anybody ever seen a tree like that? Would you like to? I would too. This is actually, to be full disclosure, is an artist rendering done by a college professor who is an artist and, I don't know what he's, I can't remember the term you would use for him, but what he discovered is he, he, he knows how to scientifically graft seeds onto a tree to produce. This tree, in theory, and he actually has trees producing in different spots of the country. He's done this in, uh, throughout the country. Forty different fruit off of one tree. Now, you always hear, you can only have oranges off an orange tree, apples off an apple tree, so on and so on and so on. This kind of challenges that min mindset. Forty different fruit, seed-bearing fruit off of one tree, all because somebody learned how to scientifically graft, but there's still a tree trunk. There's still tree branches, and then the blooms. Turn with me, if you will, to Galatians, because that's the most important part where we're going to be today. Verses 22 through 26. But the Holy Spirit produces this kind of fruit in our lives. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, 
goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. There's no law against these things. Those who belong to Christ Jesus have nailed the passions and desires of their sinful nature to his cross and crucified them there. Since we are living by the Spirit, let us follow the Spirit's leading in every part of our lives. Let us not become conceited or provoke one another or be jealous of one another. So I'm going to go backwards for a moment, 24 through 26. So this, he's speaking to those of us. So if you don't know Jesus, this isn't really speaking to you. He's addressing those who claim to know Jesus. So if you know him, your worldly, earthly, fleshly passions and desires should have been nailed to the cross with Jesus. They're not yours anymore. Don't keep, don't keep ownership. You've gotten rid of them. You've signed over ownership, like signing a deed over to somebody who buys your house. You've signed it over. So that's what you, in theory, have done with your sins and your fleshly persona. is signed it over to Jesus, who took care of it by the demonstration we saw today of the blood and the broken body. So then he goes on to say, he's, he's, he's presumptive here. He's, he's being really direct. Since we're living by the Spirit, so that's, oh, by the way, you better be living by the Spirit. Kind of what he's saying. Oh, by the way, you better be living by the Spirit. If what you did, if if you meant that, you gave up your fleshly thoughts and, and actions and desires to follow Jesus, the only way to do that is by the Spirit. So let us follow the Spirit's leading in some parts of our lives. No, oh, that's not what it says. Every part of your life. You can't keep a little closet. You know, everybody has closets or junk drawers in their house. That's, that's, you can't touch the junk drawer, you know. Whatever's in there is in there. Organize everything else, but don't touch my junk drawer. Or that's my closet. You can have everything else in the house, sweetheart. (laughs) But not that one. No? Thank you, Mike. You understand. You're with me on that one, aren't you? (laughs) No, every part of our life. So then because we do those things, then we can do verse 26, not become conceited. Or provoke others or be jealous of what Abram has that I don't have. Believe me, I'm not jealous that you have two little bitty kids right now. (laughs) Thank you, Jesus. Been there, done that. Blessings on you. Uh, So the, the fruits of the Spirit, there's nine of them listed. They're broken down into three categories. The first one is a Godward relationship is how I would call it. Love, joy, peace, all centered on God the Father. Then after that, it's the outward relationship of patience, kindness, goodness. And then we get to the inward man relationship, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. All of these are related to each other, and all should characterize our life. Now the question For me, I know in studying this, thank you, this wasn't easy because it's very convicting when you read and study these and and I'm like, but I don't have that attribute. I don't have that attribute. I'm missing this one too. And slowly the count of nine goes down to maybe one or two on a good day. If I'm really where I should be, five or six. And you just feel, really, this isn't easy. This isn't, I can't do it. Yes, that's right. You can't do it. So that takes the pressure out of it. If you stop and think about it, we get under pressure, under condemnation, when we feel like we have to perform. It's not a dog and pony show with 
a master around. God's not a master of a dog and pony show and leading us around. That's not how it works. In John, uh, and, and love is talked about, and love is, I will say, like I said earlier, love is the most important fruit of the Spirit because it's the basis under which all the others can function and be present. Because if you don't have love, and Scripture says that, I think it's in 1 Corinthians 13. Without love, all these other things are meaningless. It's, what does he say? It's a sounding gong, and that's not very pleasant. Sorry, musicians. But just a sounding gong is kind of not pleasant. And they even agree with that. They get it. It's not pleasant. But if you have love, then you can begin to pursue the other things and, and allow the Holy Spirit to manifest in your life. In John 13, John 13, 35, it says, Love, your love for one another will prove to the world that you are my disciples. So we don't even have to argue a case. I don't need a lawyer. I don't need a lawyer to walk through life to back up my claim to know Jesus. My love, how I love people, is a testimony of that. And that's nothing against a lawyer and what they do, but I don't need that for this. I have direct access to the Father and to Jesus and ultimately the Holy Spirit. Romans 13 is another verse. 1 Corinthians 13, 1 through 7 or more. I'm, I'm, because of time, I won't go through all of these. But uh, it's more than emotion. It's an action. Love is an action. Salvation is a verb. It's an action. Have been, will be, or am, and will be saved. Love isn't a one-time, okay, we signed our marriage certificate, I'm good. Now I can go do my thing, you do your thing. No. Love is an interaction thing all the time. No matter what. It's a choice. It's self-giving, not selfish. There's how you can really judge, or fruit inspect might be the better word. because We don't like that word judge, but fruit inspection Fruit inspection is fair game. It's fair game. This is my world, and scripturally, I think it bears out. What's your fruit saying? I don't, you know, you don't have to tell me a word. I can just watch your life. You can watch my life. Don't watch too close, please, because <laughs> you'll be disappointed. But love isn't optional. It's just not. There's no argument about this. It's not open for discussion. Love. And not emotional love or sensual love or friendship love, but rather the love of the Father, the agape love. That I can love you no matter who you are, what you've done, how you look, what you do, how you dress, what your bank account looks like. It's irrelevant. Because, and I can't do that on my own. It's the fruit of the Spirit, the first fruit. Because of the Holy Spirit, I can love anybody. I don't have to love what they do. There's a distinction, and our society has lost that. Our society has lost that. They think we judge them if we say anything about what they're doing. No, it's what you're doing I don't agree with, but you I love. And it convicts them, I think, is what it boils down to. That convicts them, and they don't know how to deal with it. So it's easier to just fight back at you. Joy, the second thing. It's not dependent upon circumstances. But boy, sometimes it feels like it is, doesn't it? I can't be very happy when I don't have money to pay the rent. 
or my car just got smashed by somebody or broken into or I got sick and it didn't come at a very good time, not that sickness ever comes at any good time. It's hard to be joyful. But you can be joyful with the Holy Spirit because that's it's him doing these things. That's what you got to keep remembering. All of these gifts, it's not me doing them. It's not you doing them. We're just the conduit. It's all we are for Jesus, the conduit. His hands, his feet, as is, is Casting Crown sings that song, were his feet, were his hands, and going out. Uh, and life gets messy and it gets kind of brutal. But joy can still be there. And the people I I enjoy being around probably the most are those who suffer different calamities in their life but are still joyful. Have you known anybody like that? I hope you've known a lot of people like that. I hope everybody in this room can say we're like that. But that's so enjoyable and refreshing to be around somebody that no matter how bad it gets, they still got a smile. They still got a giddy up in their step. They still, I worked on a house this last two weeks ago for a lady, 80 years old. She went on a mission trip to Honduras. How many in this room would sign up for that just right now? I'll, I'll do that. There's one, two, three. We got a few. But 80, you guys aren't 80 years old either. She's 80 years old. So she has built-in excuses. Do we get the, uh, I, well, I didn't read that verse of excuse in the Bible. Do you know of one? I, I didn't think there, I don't think there is an excuse verse. So she's chosen not to let her age be a limiter. It's not a limiter. Maybe poor grammar, but that's what I'm using. She's still open to the Holy Spirit. She still wants to be used. And this wasn't just a go and I don't want to be, it was an evangelical trip, specific-minded. This was to share the gospel. This wasn't just to go feed some people. Not that that's bad. That's a good thing. But their point of emphasis, we're going to share Jesus with these people. And the other things will come. The other things will, will happen. But let's share Jesus first. Because what do you need first? Do you need clothes, food, water, or Jesus? You better want, hopefully you said, I need Jesus first. Because I can't live without him. I can live without other stuff, but I can't live without him. The third thing, peace. Only the Holy Spirit can give peace in the midst of storms and chaos. And I've listened to many people say, I just want peace. I want peace. Well, the Holy Spirit offers peace. In Isaiah 26, it says, You will keep in perfect peace all who trust in you, all, those, all whose thoughts are fixed on you. So there, again, is a choice opportunity. Where's my mind focused? And it's so easy. We have all this stuff hitting us all the time. If you could visually see everything that's hitting each of us in our brains, it would cloud this room. We couldn't be able to see each other. The cloud would be so dark from all the stuff just coming at us all the time. It's everywhere. But we have to keep choose to keep a focus. John 14, 47 or excuse me, 27. I'm leaving you with a gift, peace of mind and heart. And the peace I give is a gift the world cannot give. I'll say that again. The peace I give is a gift the world cannot give. So don't be troubled or afraid. So if trouble begins to seep into your life, or fear, choose again to focus on the Holy Spirit. Choose again to focus on the words of God. 
Because there's where your peace is at. Not your bank account. Not your social life. And I can run a gamut of a lot of things and I don't need to. You, you get the point. It's focusing on Jesus and the Holy Spirit. Our outward relationships then begin to take in the next several or three. Patience. I don't know if there's anybody in the room like me, but I, I learned a long time ago because I heard this said and I experienced this. I thought, don't ever pray for patience. <laughs> Have you heard that? Yeah. This is what happens. <laughs> Things happen. Yeah. Guess what? In studying this, I had a, a redirection in my path and in my mind. You don't need to pray for patience. Patience is already a gift to you, a fruit to you. The Holy Spirit is offering fruit. Here's the apple. Here's the orange. Here's the bottle of water. It's not fruit. It's already there. You don't have to pray for it. It's there. Do you choose to live in it? Are you living in it? Because it's already there. Impatience does come, but it's not from God. Uh, that's from the world and our situations. But we have to walk in what he has given us. Joseph is a great example in the Bible of a, of a man who had patience. And you say, well, how could that be? If you know the story of Joseph, life wasn't so well for him most of his life, physically and emotionally. He was a favorite son. His older brothers didn't take too kindly to that. Threw him in a pit. Sold him into slavery. You know, you, you know the story. It just keeps getting worse and worse and worse for Joseph. But he didn't lash out. He didn't, I, I never heard a scripture that said he cried to God, Lord, deliver me from all of this. I'm sick of this. I can't take it. Stop it. No, he just persevered. He went through, he dealt with the ordeals. He dealt with the circumstances. He had patience. He ends up, as the story goes, in high, high cotton, so to speak. He had high authority. How interesting that his brothers had to come and kind of uh, gulp a little when they had to come to Joseph, their little brother, who they abused, threw away, did everything but kill him. They, in essence, did kill him because they sold him into slavery that could have killed him. And here they have to bow to him to get food, to get supplies. And did he use that against them? No, he didn't. He was loving. Joseph had a fruit of the Spirit going on. He had love. Kindness, we cannot have such a passion for righteousness that we have no room left for compassion. Sometimes we're so busy, we think, pushing for God and doing church things or doing really good things, but are we doing the best? Do we have compassion for people? That's what I love about my pastor. You have compassion for people. That's one of the greatest things I love about you. You have great compassion. Um, and when you're a person who has needed compassion in your life, and maybe you didn't get it at that particular time, and you, <laughs> you see it later, that's okay. Uh, you appreciate it. You appreciate it because compassion, wow. And all we, ha we don't have to look too far. There's people hurting everywhere who don't need you to say something. You know, I don't need you to build me up. I don't need you to tell me this or tell me that. What I really enjoy is if you just love me. Put your arm around me, maybe. Smile at me. Have compassion. Uh, that means more.
In 2 Timothy, it talks about not quarreling, being kind to everybody, be able to teach, and to be patient with difficult people. You know, it's easy to love the lovely, as I've heard in my past. It's harder to love the unlovely. Those that irritate us and get under our skin, maybe you're not like that, but I have those moments where people can irritate me. And I realize, wow, in reading this not-so-easy week, (laughs) I'm sorry, Brianna, it pointed out a lot of faults for myself that I'm like, forgive me, Lord. Holy Spirit, I want your fruit back in my life because I'm missing it here. I've gotten agitated with somebody, and that's not allowable. That's not okay. That's not okay in God's terms. You can't make an excuse and go, well, maybe this time or maybe just, just a little bit. Can I just a little bit be edged? No. No room for it. No room for it. In James, he talks about peace-loving, gentle, yielding to others. Oh, you mean I can't have my way all the time? But I want my way all the time. Yeah. Doesn't work so well. Yielding to others, full of mercy And good deeds, no favoritism. Be sincere. Because people see all this. You can't fool people. But if you have these attributes, again, they will know us by our love and the rest of our fruit. i got to hurry up. There's goodness, uh, life worthy of his call. Honor will be brought to the Father through us living with goodness. And good is to be like God, not like pastor, not to be like your mom, your dad, your hero. Some of you may say, ah, if I could just be Patrick Mahomes, look at the fame and the fortune he has. You don't want to be Patrick Mahomes. You want to be you. You want to be you and all that God has in you. Because unless Patrick Mahomes knows Jesus, you have more to offer to him than he does to you. That's not my original thought. I got that from Don Collins. You hear that a lot, I know. But it's truth. It's truth. And we sometimes, and that's not to walk around arrogantly, well, I got more to offer than you do. No, that's not what I mean. Don't get so captivated by what other people have that you think is great and marvelous because maybe they're rottenly miserable inside and you just don't see it. You don't live with them. You don't understand. And a guy like Patrick Mahomes has all kinds of people wanting stuff from him all the time. I don't have that. That's kind of refreshing. You know, maybe my family at, at, at the most... But other than that, I don't have people just always wanting this from me or expecting that I'm going to do this and this for them because I have wealth and I have fame. Not that those are bad things, but we forget to look at the other side of the coin because there's always two sides to a coin. It's a trite saying, but it's truth. The last three things are relationship, inward relationship oriented, Uh, faithfulness, wow, lack of faithfulness is a sign of spiritual immaturity, we started off in Galatians, or I did, I can remember talking about promise versus law, Abraham, that's why there became the promise, is because of Abraham's faithfulness, how faithful are you? Not faithful to go, nobody's necessarily saying, well, the only way you're faithful is if you go lead 10 people to Christ every Tuesday and every Thursday, and then twice in the summer you go on mission trips. And and I could give you a list of church things, but how are you living your life in what God's called you to do, what the task he's given you? Because the fruit of the Spirit is the same for all of us. It's an even playing field. The table is the same for all of us. Spiritual gifts is a different thing. But spiritual, spirit of the fruit of the Spirit, we all have access to the same fruit. 
It's an equal playing field. God began a good work in us, and he will perfect it. That's in Philippians. Faithfulness, oh, excuse me, I went. And, of course, a classic example of faithfulness is the parable of the talents in Matthew 25. God doesn't give each of us the same gifts, but whatever he gives to you, you be faithful with. And don't ask for other gifts unless he wants to give them to you. Gentleness, eighth gift. It's a quiet strength, meekness. Meekness isn't being mealy mouth and uh, puny, being weak. Meekness is being tender. Um, it's a love that's under discipline. It's under discipline. Sometimes I'm not very meek. Um, I can get agitated and react. That's not being meek. Now there is a time to react. Jesus demonstrated that in the temple. He cleared it out quickly. Sound judgment. Not to think more highly of yourself. God's allotted to each of us a, message, a, a, a measure of faith. Jesus' yoke is, he is gentle and humble in heart. You'll find rest for your souls in him. That's in Matthew 11. The ninth and final fruit of the Spirit Self-control. Wow. Maybe you were doing real good through eight and that one got you. I don't know. Self-control. That's hard for everybody. I'll let you all off the hook. That's hard for everybody. Maybe you want to eat too much, drink too much, have too much fun, stay up too late. Or, I mean, those are just some short examples, but it could encompass all kinds of things. Self-control. And again, I'll go back to what I said about patience. You don't have to pray for self-control. You have to pray, Lord, help me to be subservient to Holy Spirit for that fruit that you already have given me. It's already there. Help me to walk in it. Help me to walk in it. And our mind should be on things of the Spirit. And if we don't have self-control, it's kind of like in Proverbs, it talks about a city where there's no walls. It's easily broken into and pillaged and things taken. If you don't have self-control, you kind of are opening up your heart and your life to trouble. Things can come in that maybe shouldn't be in. Self-control is critical. And again, this tree that we had up earlier. If you want to put that back up, Aaron, just it looks better than there. Thank you. Um, while in the natural, a 40, fo 40 fruit tree, say that slowly, is not normal. It can be done. This guy has proven it can be done. But God's only talking about nine, not 40. But look at the beauty of that tree. Look at all the different buds, different colors of the different buds, blooms from the different fruits. I'd like to have four or five of those trees in my yard. Then people would want to come to my yard all the time, so I guess that wouldn't be very good. <laughs> so I don't want that. They trample on my lawn. That's inside humor. Point is, the fruit is there. The fruit is there. Multiple fruit is there for us. It's already there. Are you living off the fruit of the tree, the fruit of the Spirit? Four takeaways. I don't know if this is too many, but this is what I'm giving you. There really is not a conflict between the law and faith. Rather, the fruit of the Spirit fulfills the intention of the law. Second one, our old nature cannot produce fruit of the Spirit can't do it. I don't care how good you are, how talented you are. You cannot produce fruit of the Spirit on your own sinful nature. Third thing, victory comes through surrendering, not struggling. 
Yeah, but you don't understand. I've had all these things happen to me. Okay, so? Fruit of the Spirit. It's there. Are you choosing to allow it to have preeminence in your life? And fourth, you're never asked to live the Christian life. Rather, you're asked to let him live through you. Then the fruit will come. There's a difference. Because I can't, I, I'm going to tell you right now, I can't live the Christian life. So I'm thankful that God didn't really ask me to. He asked me to let him live through me. And today's your opportunity, if you've never done that, to allow Jesus to walk through you. It's a daily walk. Paul talks about take up my cross daily. I don't really know exactly what he meant by that totally because there's, you know, Paul lived with physical afflictions. Could have been that. He was obviously persecuted. Maybe it was the torment of his past. We don't know specifics. We've got a pretty good idea because we, we're humans. We have afflictions that happen to us. Whatever your cares, concerns are, daily take them up and praise team you can come now if you would like the holy spirit is already in every christian's heart and he intends to produce the fruit of the spirit in us but there's got to be dis a displacement most of you know what a boat is most of you have probably been in a boat whether it's a cruiser or a little john boat a boat doesn't sink when it's in the water. But, if it, but it does sink when water comes into the boat. So there's a distinct difference. We don't fail to enjoy the fruit of the Spirit because we live in a sea of corruption. We fail because the sea of corruption is in us. That's the convicting part of this. The corruption's out there, but have you let it in to your heart and your mind? Yes, we all have. Because Jesus said, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. All is pretty inclusive, last time I checked. So the corruption is out there. We've all let it in, but we can all cast it out. We can bail it out real quick by calling on Jesus so to coin kind of a coin phrase what's in your boat not what's in your wallet but what's in your boat what's in your boat let's pray Holy Spirit again we thank you for today we thank you for great words of encouragement from your word Lord Jesus we thank you that you love us so much that you did choose to die. You did choose to suffer and take on the brunt of all sin that would ever be. I can't imagine the agony, the emotional trauma, the physical abuse, and even the feeling of lostness and separation from Father God in that garden. But you chose to walk that road of Calvary to Calvary. You chose to allow the abuse to you. You chose to hang on that cross, mutilated beyond recognition, so that each of us could have eternal life. And so thankfully you said, I'm sending one to prepare give you all that you need to be your comfort to be your power to be your strength Holy Spirit you were there in creation and you're here now Holy Spirit we want the fruit that you offer all nine of them not just one of them or two of them Lord we want all nine and I pray that for each individual here today Lord, I pray for those that maybe don't know you today, that today is their 
leap day, that they leap from their seat to the altar to praise you and to repent, to give their life to you. Thank you, Jesus.